Sergeant Jesse Graybell from the State Patrol is joining us. Jesse, is this uh, State Fair Patrol Day? It is, as a matter of fact. Always the first Monday of the Minnesota State Fair is our day. You got the Model A on display? We do not. That's one of our vehicles that did not get brought here this year. Too hot for Model A? <laughs> it, it probably was, <laughs> but we did We did get the 1930 Harley-Davidson motorcycle Wonderful. Here. How long have you been a trooper? Uh, almost 27 years now. Why? Why did you want to be one? So for me, it's a family thing. My, I'm following in the footsteps of my father and my grandfather. They were yeah. both state troopers. So that's, I guess, how it started. Really? Yeah. Where, are you, where are you from? So uh, a little town called Barnesville, Minnesota. Sure. Up near Moorhead. Yeah. Yeah, right off I-94. And uh, uh, does traffic uh, tend to get more aggressive in weather like this? You know, it can. It can. But I, I promised myself on days like today, you will never hear me complain about the heat because oh, I think of well, those days that we have in the winter. You're the, one of those the zero guys. Visibility. So I'm <laughs> not going to complain either. So. See, you get um, two, a day like, two a year like this. I am <laughs> under the belief that the state should be shut down on days like this. <laughs> we should be forced to stay home. Are you on duty uh, down there uh, talking to the fairgoers? I am. We uh, we got a large display of all our you know different uh, things of equipment and all that. And, yes, just a real nice meet and greet for everybody to come through. Is there one uh, central state headquarters for the state tr- pro, uh, patrol or are there satellite uh, control offices? So we have a, a central headquarters, which is here in St. Paul, yep. and then the state patrol is broken down into districts. I believe it's 11 different districts throughout the state of Minnesota. So, for example, where I'm at, out in west central Minnesota, would be the, like Detroit Lakes would be the headquarters oh, there. Okay. Correct. Are you ever uh, uh, on the walls duty? Uh, occasionally, when uh, they come into your area, yes. So, okay. yeah, tro- troopers in that area can get asked to help with our uh, our uh, governor detail team. Because his uh, his he's staying at East Cliff, the uh, University of Minnesota house on River Boulevard, and that is surrounded by law enforcement. Sure. I suppose and, since and he became a VP nominee. Well, yeah, uh, in State Patrol, we, we always do provide security for the, the governor's details. So. Right. Yes. Right. Uh, I have a couple of questions for you. You working up in the uh, Fargo-Moorhead area, out on the windy plains. Why is it uh, that in the dead of winter, when the wind's blowing 80 miles an hour and we've got drifts across the road, virtually everybody is in the ditch except the state (laughs) patrol? What are you guys and gals doing differently the, than the civilians, the general public are doing. What's up there? Just taking your time. You That's gotta, all it takes. You got to take Driving your time. Driving carefully. Yeah. yeah, yeah. How many of your um, cruisers are rear-wheel drive? Uh, well, now nowadays everything is actually pretty much all-wheel drive. All of so, them are. Yeah, even yeah. the sedans. Right. And I just actually picked up a new squad car yesterday. Nice. So, yeah, I went what from the char- uh, Durango. I went from a Charger to a Durango. Oh, really? Really? what kind? What what motor you got in that thing? It's got the Hemi. Oh, so you'll be able to spool it up. <laughs> cool. Cool. <laughs> all right. Uh, I, I'm guessing you don't see the amount of drunk drivers that we do down here. Um, Joe, Jesse and I met, or Sergeant Grabo, excuse me, um, because he follows my Twitter account, and I have an amazing Twitter account. I'm probably the best follow on Twitter. Absolutely. <laughs> um, and, of course, I follow him, and that's how we kind of got to know each other. Um, you don't see the amount of drunk drivers down up there that we do down here, do you? Number-wise, no. I mean, obviously, the population is part of it. You know, it's just got more people, more, you know, potential for things to happen, such as DWI arrests. And, uh, but we do have our issues out there, and just all over Minnesota. And we have seen an increase in our fatal crashes here uh, going the wrong direction. We've been making progress for many years, but then 2020 happened, and our numbers seem to keep going up each year. And it's, it's something we're trying to figure out, what can we do to oh, save more lives? I don't like you talking about that because I know what you're going to say. You want to lower the speed limit when the rest of us want it to be 85. Uh, well, I, I don't know that because we've had the speed limits go up on our, on our regular two-lane roadways. You know, it's up yeah. to 60. It's not that. Yeah. But if we can just get people to slow down, that's just it. Drive yeah. good common sense. And then, of course, you know, drive sober. We're seeing, you know, alcohol. Um, controlled substance, that type of thing. But, of course, just getting everybody to wear their seatbelts and to pay attention. Stay off these things, the, the devices. So, so that's pretty weird. You pull somebody over, uh, they roll down the window. It's like Cheech and Chong's, <laughs> and you can smell the weed from 10 feet away. What do you do then? Well, it, uh, you just do the same thing. you got to go through your questions. I mean, uh, or do they seem like they're not influenced? I mean, it's the same thing. Because people always ask, like, well, is, is there – obviously, it's the clues that the person's displaying, right? I mean, yeah. it's just uh, – yeah. are they complete, Are they acting like they're impaired? I mean, that's, that's a big part of it. And that comes through training, experience. Experience, all these things. I mean, it, and it becomes very obvious, I think, for some, anybody that's had training experience, especially when you're the sober on around those people. So, so if you pull me over and you suspect me, the first thing I'm going to say to you is Z Y X W V U T S R. 
Q O N M and right up to A. That's I'll impressive. Do it backwards because that's one of the standard. He's questions. He's had to do right? that quite a bit in his <laughs> yeah. life. He's had practice. Times. That that's a standard everyday question, right? Yeah, you know we get asked. Oh no, we do not because Damn I'm not going to have somebody do something that I can't do. So no, it, it is. Jesse, not. I'm going to tell you something I told the guys and see if you agree with it. I've noticed a change in driving. In this sense, people are pulling out in front of you in ways they did not used to. They're 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 not. They're pulling out in front of you when they don't have as much room as they did and years ago. And then they ago. don't spool it up. Is that? Am I imagining that? I think you might be right because you know that's it's a number of crashes where somebody fails to yield the right away. I'm like, what are they doing? Are they distracted? I mean, they're on the device, just not. And that's another thing. So Minnesota, we have a hands-free law. You're, you can be on your phones, but you, you got to keep your hands free. But right. at the same time, your hands are free. Is your mind free? Is it clear? And that's just it. I think there's that distraction. You I get have my doubts. <laughs> you know, you might be right, and I think that's that. That's a cognitive distraction. Your mind gets elsewhere, even though you think you're you got two hands in the wheel, but still, is the mind focusing on driving? I can't tell you how many times in the outskirts I've missed my exit because something's going on up here, and you just drive right by it. You ever find yourself like driving somewhere new for the first, you know, maybe you've never been to this area, and all of a sudden you're like, turn down your radio. You ever do that? And like, oh, yeah, sure. And then you just sure. like, Dad, I gotta like, turn it turn down to find yeah. an address. <laughs> Well, that's just it. My kids yeah. are like, what are you doing, Dad? I'm like, well, just kind of clearing your mind, I right, guess, you know, right. yeah. focusing. I turned down the radio in order to not get lost. <laughs> so People uh, used to turn down the radio when Joe and Rook came on the air. Hey, right. hey, like, hey, 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 play hey, it fair, hey. play it fair. Uh, yeah, I can, what, Kenny came on the air, I can hear the radios clicking yeah. up. Yeah. Across the line. <laughs> right, that's what uh, So before I started doing traffic, like every good American, I pretty much hated troopers uh, <laughs> because I didn't realize that you guys essentially are babysitters and help uh, helpers here in the metro. All you do is help dumbbells out on a daily basis. And it's really amazing, and it's really changed my opinion about what you guys do. And from my perspective, watching the cameras, you don't, do, you don't bother with speed enforcement whatsoever. In the Twin Cities, from what I've seen, your main goal is to keep the flow going move crashes to the side, take care of the flat tires, the out of gas, all the idiots on the road. All you guys do is babysit. Well, it gets busy. It's a, there's a lot of different dynamics. I mean, there's still, I can assure you, there's still plenty of enforcement going on yeah. because yeah. speeding is issue and all these things. But at the same time, the, the flow of traffic, as you mentioned, is so important to keep things going because we get those backups, we got more crashes, secondary crashes, and that's not what we want to see. We don't want to see people getting hurt or something worse. Have I you ever been involved in law enforcement a situation that had nothing to do with being a state trooper? What do you mean? Oh, bank robbery or oh, uh, sure. uh, yeah. f- uh, f- uh, shooting. Yeah, or, I mean, uh, and that's one thing, especially, well, law enforcement even here, but even in outstate, you really depend on the other agencies you work with, the local I mean, police departments. I mean, you're expected to do that, right? Oh, certainly. I mean, that's we, we rely on them. They We help each other out. Yeah. It's, it's a team effort, no yeah. doubt. Yeah. I, I bet you see a lot of violations when you're just driving around in your regular unmarked vehicle that's not a state patrol vehicle, don't you? I do. That's got to be frustrating. You know, I just actually got back from a family trip. We went out east, went out the east coast, and I got back on the turnpike. Uh, first time turnpike driving from Pennsylvania through Chicago. I, I feel really good about Minnesota drivers now. I really do compared <laughs> to out there. It, it, it was. It blew my mind. It yeah. was aggressive. The, the, yeah. the distracted yeah. driving was gone because they have hands-free laws too, but it was just it was so blatant. It was just it was frustrating. And, and, uh, and being a parent of three boys, my oldest is driving now. Yeah. He just got his driver's license. Just oh. set the example. And they're oh. like, hey, buddy, you see that? Don't do that. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, always we want to wish you to be safe and good luck. Uh, you guys do great work. And, yeah, uh, thank you so much, yeah. really. Yeah. Well, thank you. You know, we, we had a pretty mild winter last year. Yeah. So what's going to happen yeah. this year? Yeah. Well, know. if we get as much snow this winter as we've had rain this summer, right? The, we're going to get 12 feet of snow. So... You mean a pretty mild winter outside of a Hennepin County prosecutor going after an, a trooper? You mean outside of that? Outside of that, mild. yeah. Well, that's yeah. A, another thing. I see so much good that you guys do, and you only make headlines when something goes wrong. And yeah. it's really, really frustrating from my standpoint. It really is. And I don't know if you want to comment on that or not. Uh, but it's got to be tough going to work like that when everybody's giving you the stink eye. Well, you know, we're, we're, I think we're so fortunate. I mean, we get support from you, from everybody. We're just, you know, fortunate to serve, and uh, that's that's what we're going to do day in and day out, morning, noon, and night. Thank Thanks, you, sir. Thanks, Jesse. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much.